Do you know your blood group? Chances are you do. And if you type that in the comment region, you're going to find something or notice something. Majority of the people in the population will have blood group O. How comes then it is in this blood group O that forms the majority, you're going to find the rarest blood to a point where this is actually called golden blood because of two things. One, very rare of course. Two, it's so valuable to a point where it can be given to almost ever, not almost, to everyone downstream. If you don't know your blood group, you can do two things. One, if you are in Nairobi, you can go to lab care. It's a lab which is located in Forty Suit. Just go there, ask for lab care, get tested. Very cheap. Now, second option that you have is just go to any regional blood transfusion center or any donation center. Just go donate your blood. They're going to test your blood group for free and they're going to write that in a booklet. So by now, I assume you know your blood group. If not, then I've given you an option and by then you can go to any laboratory and get tested for the same. Now, how comes that uh, blood group O, which forms the majority, it is in this blood we are going to find the rarest blood. Now, we are going to start from what we know, blood groups. What usually makes them? First of all, we have several things that you need to put at the back of your mind. We have blood group A, we have B, we have AB, and we have O. But where do we get these figures? Where do we get these alphabets from? Now, they are antigens. Now, when you get an injury, you see your blood or any, anything, even animal's blood. If you look at it, it's usually red because of red blood cells, and they are usually like this. Now, on the surface, we have things that we usually call antigens. And we have different types. It can be A type, which will give you blood group A. And then we have others that will have the same, but the antigens will be now B. And the same thing will go to AB. Now, AB is a little bit interesting because in this one, you're going to find both. You're going to find A and also B on the surface. Now, O is also very interesting because you're going to find nothing. They don't have any antigens. Now, with this information at the back of our minds, let me introduce you to another blood group system. Actually, I'm going to introduce two. But this one, the one that we've discussed here, is called ABO. We have around 50 blood group systems. We have RH, this is Rhesus, and also we have the Bombay uh, that usually use H antigen. But then, let's first of all get away with that, that we are going to come back to that in a few minutes. Now, these three are clinically significant as much as sometimes H can be rare, we call it Bombay phenotype that usually affect mostly the blood group O. But then, let's first of all deal with what we know, the rhesus. And by the way, I know you know this because of uh, the HDN, hemolytic disease of the newborn, whereby if a mother is rhesus negative, they can suffer loss of pregnancy due to the rhesus factor. And by the way, I don't have power, I'm using the light from the window. You might find fluctuations in light, so just ignore that. And also there is some noise in the background, also ignore that. Now, when it comes to the rhesus, I'm sure you've heard that we have rhesus positive and we have rhesus negative. This is, you can be blood group A, either minus or plus, minus, plus. That's A positive, A negative. So that negative connotes to this rhesus factor here. And how do we get here? That's the same thing. On the surface, let me change the color of my pen. On the surface of the same red blood cell, you're going to find other structures. They are also antigens. They are going to be on the surface. And this will now be denoting now the rhesus. So they're going to be here. And interestingly, in case you so happen to get the wrong blood, you, they, they are going to react. Most of the time, they're going to react. Now, the same thing will happen here. You're going to have antigens here. In as much as you don't have the ABO group antigens, you're going to have the rhesus antigens. And that's why we can have ABO, which can be either minus or plus, minus, plus. So you can be rhesus positive or negative based on whether you have a very significant antigen in the rhesus blood group system. In rhesus, we have several antigens in there. Like, for example, in ABO system, we have two. We have A and B, and then a combination you can find both in the same red blood cell. But then when we come to rhesus, we have so many other antigens, but then we're going to focus on those which are clinically significant. Then uh, in this case, we have C, cups, and then we have a small C. Then we have D, and then we have another D. This is not an antigen, by the way. This is just a connotation 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 of absence of D. Don't just ignore that. Um, the only person is supposed to know this. Even your doctor does not necessarily need to know this. So this is C, D, and then we have E, and then we have E. So these ones are the ones that are clinically significant. That's, they can react when you get the wrong blood. Now, 
without going into the details because this is a rabbit hole you can get a situation where yes you have resource but you don't have a d antigen so you're going to have d so if you have this it doesn't mean that you don't have resource at all you have resource yes but a different antigen of resource and now i know if you work you know if you are a scientist you work in you are close to a laboratory or maybe in a blood transfusion you know where we are headed now let's leave that at that there is another antigen that we said called h this is where something that we call bombay phenotype and this is where now we are going to, everything by the way will merge together and it's going to make a lot of sense so just bear with me so in this h antigen is also another antigen on the surface of the red blood cells and this is where you'll find that let's start with o and there is a reason i'm starting with o so in o you're going to find that we have a h antigen h antigen h h h so they're going to be there now imagine we also have the same shear but now if you if you are keen you can observe that here the surface is now becoming congested because we have both a we have b we have the resource antigen and now we are adding h also it's another antigen that can also cause a reaction and especially in blood group o the same thing will happen here yes we have some more spaces here because we have only two antigens that's resource and also the abo antigen that will be b and similar thing will happen to this we have other antigen that will be connoting for h h antigen h antigen but if you look closely the one that will have a lot of space will be blood group o because we don't have the a b o so their space is still there open so you are going to pack a lot of h antigens in there meaning that blood group o will have more h antigens compared to any other and by the way still on the same blood group a b will have the least but then we don't so much care about these ones we care about O because it's going to pack a lot of them now let's go to another page and this is where almost everything will make sense now we have four blood groups we have a we have b we have a b and we have O. let's just draw a table here just quickly and uh, by the way don't mind about my drawings and my presentations they are terrible i know but uh, you know trees they'll make a point now we have our blood groups here and remember we said this will form the majority but let's go to resource the resource here you can have either plus or minus so this can be plus or minus plus or minus plus or minus and here can be plus or minus but this is a little bit rare the reason for this is this is almost completely the universal donor it can be given to anyone without even worrying so much because this like we said can be given to anyone downstream this guy here yes they form we can call them the least in the population but then they have the biggest advantage of them all in that they can receive blood from anyone universal recipient so we are not going to worry about them because they can be given by even blood group a or even b and even o but when it comes to o this one this guy can give to everyone but can only receive from blood group o minus resource negative so this guy is so generous can give to everyone downstream but can only receive from their own kind quite good but then a disadvantage to them now let's go to the resource that's now we said that you can have resource or completely have nothing so there is two types you can have resource positive or negative or something that we call null null is you don't have any of the resource antigen like nothing in the population that's in the whole world we only have 50 around 50 documented cases of known resource null not negative not positive null meaning that they don't have any antigen and if you remember we said that we have so many resource antigens in there and this one by the way should not give you any headache this is not a resource this is a connotation of not having a d antigen d is the most common and this is mostly the one that the doctor will say hey your resource positive your resource negative they are most of the time referring to d but we have so many others like i said we have c we have e and we have the year also uh, small c and also an e so by now you understand that in resource you can be either positive negative or null meaning that you don't have anything so you are null resource null so you can be a either positive negative or null nothing you don't have any resource antigen of the service so the population here this is here the documented cases are only known to be 50 this is a combination of a b a b and o the combination but now let's dig deeper into this rabbit hole 
and it's actually going to be more interesting as we go down. Now, remember we said the form AB forms the least in the population. And if you look closely, they can be given by anyone because they are universal recipients. But now if you go to these guys here, forming the majority and can give anyone, but now they can only receive from their own, we narrow down. Now, let's start now going a little bit deeper. If you remember the H antigen, which we say is also one of the antigens that you're going to find on the service, we call this Bombay phenotype, Bombay. You can look that up in Wikipedia or any other place. You can read more about that. It's very interesting, by the way. So you can have H or not have H. So you can have that. Let me just remove this so that it's a little bit cleaner. So you can have plus or minus so we can just put this as plus minus plus minus plus minus now now you can imagine the permutations that we do have now imagine you are o you have no resource and then you happen to have no h on the service now the reason h can be significant is because they can make someone have antibodies against it. If you don't have this H antigen, you can react to it if someone introduces that into your system. And this will make you even more rarer, this H. Now imagine now, this is in the conclusions zones. Now imagine your blood group O, you don't have RISA, so you are null. You also happen to be H negative, that's the Bombay phenotype. So you don't have any H on the service, meaning that you can only receive blood from your own kind. And sometimes you can receive blood group from O, and because they are positive here, your blood is going to react. You can only receive from your own kind, and you can give anyone literally anyone in that population. So you can give that blood to anyone. You can actually even just take your blood so long as you don't have diseases and it's hard to know. So it's very important for you to make sure that you get your blood clean fast in a hospital, proper to do that. And imagine now you can get a tube leading from you donating directly to another person without even getting to know their blood group. But how rare are they? Now, remember we said in the whole of this population, of those without the resource factor, you can find that uh, they are only 50. But then when you narrow down to now the H antigen, which can be clinically significant, you get negligible numbers. And this is how you move from blood group O that forms the majority in the population to blood group O negative that forms least in the population but still accessible to being blood group O and resus null that forms 54 in the whole world. You can know the billions. Now so if you divide that by the billions that you have, you can just tell me the percentage that you get and also making it even worse you go to blood group O, that is Lisa's null, and then you don't have H antigen. I don't know whether we actually even have this. And we can even dig deeper because we have 54, around 54, 49 to 54 blood group systems. We have Kale, we have Duffy, we have MNS, we have so many blood group systems, but this, uh, these ones are the ones that you are mostly going to come across. These ones are rare, but we find them in our facilities. I hope you learned something. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And by the way, you might be interested in a video that I'm going to remake on a resus factor. And the reason people usually keep losing their babies because of resus or being resus negative. If you are interested in that, maybe you can tell me I can make that video sooner. Although I have made similar videos, you can scroll back and you can just go look at them. Yes, I hope this was fun.